fresh new haircut. Snazzy. What's going on guys? How you all doing? I hope you're having an incredible day. So as you can tell by the title, we are going to be 3D printing some RC wheels. This is something I've wanted to do for a very long time, even before I had a 3D printer. Lucky for you guys, I know exactly what I'm doing, so I mastered this first try. I'm on location where I actually attempted to drift my first proper print, which I thought would be my final print. But uh, as you can see by this little clip here, uh, yeah, they, they broke pretty quick. It did last a while, so I ended up having to do a version 2 or 200. Uh, yeah, either one. However, I did manage to get a bunch of footage of drifting around, which I put into a cool montage, which I'm going to leave at the end of this video. So I really hope you'll enjoy that. So I've ended up 3D printing the final version. Uh, here it is here. I've worked out basically all the kinks, the middle kind of um, spokes. They were a bit too thin and so I've had to make them thicker. I've, al I've also made the thickness where it joins to the hex just that little bit thicker. Now these are made for a 1 8 scale RC car because I love you guys so much. I will also be modifying it to suit a 1 10 scale RC car. So if you guys don't really care about learning how to make them yourself, I'm going to include download links in the description where you can just chuck it into Simplify 3D and print it off. Uh, if you guys want to know the 3D printing settings, click here on the timestamp on the screen and I'll take you straight to the simplified 3D part of this video. We jump into the tutorial. I have my favorite 3D printer linked below in the description if you want to get your hands on it. I'll link it for USA, UK and even Australia. Now let's get on with the tutorial. Okay guys, welcome to the tutorial part. So we're going to load up Fusion 360. Okay guys, so starting with a sketch, uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to make a rectangle and we're going to put it at 16.8 millimeters high and we're going to put it at 9.5 millimeters wide. I want the sketch to be in the center. So to center it, I basically just like to eyeball it, like zoom in, drag it, eyeball it. You want to make a line from the center origin upwards. This is just, I like to use this as a guide. Uh, you're going to make this half the diameter of the wheel. So for me, I used a 1 8 scale size wheel, which I think was about 80 millimeters, give or take. So I'm just gonna make it 90 millimeters, so you make it 45. Now, once I've got that guide there, I like to get the line tool and just start at the corner of the box and come out. And this is going to determine the width of the wheel. And then make another line from there and we bring it on the same side. Okay, so once you've done your lines, uh, you're gonna come over to the measuring tool and click on both of them. Uh, this is going to determine, again, the width of the wheel. So I think last time I used about 55 millimeters. So it's going to make it a little bit lopsided, but that's okay. Come over to your horizontal and vertical lock, click on the little dot, and then use your guideline to vertically align it. And then do the same with the other side. Now, that's going to vertically align just there. Now, use your select tool and just align it into the center. If you guys want more like offset, you can bring it further over. If you want more negative offset, I think it's called then you can bring it to the other side, but I like to just kind of align it roughly in the center there. Now, you can get rid of this guideline now, we don't need it. Okay, so now you're gonna want some thickness on the rim. So come over to the line tool, go up, and I usually make this about two millimeters, and we're going to do the same on the other side. Come up two millimeters, come to our fit points line, and we're going to go up, because we're making drift wheels, and then double click back down there, and that's gonna give it a slight curvature. Now, finish your sketch. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to do a revolve. So we're going to select both bodies. For the axis, we're going to select the red axis. And as you can see right there, it's given us a rim. I'm going to make another sketch. And now this is how I made the uh, spokes of such, the spoke pattern. We click on the edge of the wheel so it brings us right out here. And what we're going to do is we're basically going to make some kind of pattern. You can really make it whatever you want. You don't want to go outside this line or this line. So kind of so you can kind of just make it however you want it. Uh, you want to hit finish sketch. Okay guys, now that you've created your feature, you just want to click on it and then you want to hit the extrude option and we're going to go in the opposite direction. So we're going to make a cut. Uh, once you've made the cut, click OK and make sure it goes all the way through. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a circular pattern so we can repeat this. So just click on the actual inside itself and then you want to select the axis and then boom. There we go. So now you can pick how many you want. Now, the more you have, the less filament you'll use. However, the weaker it will become. Bad. So you're just going to hit that. And boom, as you can see, we've basically got a rim. We're going to create a hole. I think I used about 13 mil. 
Okay guys, so press S on your keyboard. We're gonna type in polygon, inscribe polygon. Okay, so we're gonna make it half of 17 mil, which is 8.5. Okay, so it's 8.5, but what we're gonna make it, what we're gonna do is we're going to make it 8.75, just to allow the 3D printer just a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to the uh, tolerances. So we're gonna click on our polygon and we're gonna, we're going to extrude it. And we're going to extrude it minus five millimeters. So guys, that's basically how you make one. Um, now you can edit a few different things, um, but other than that, it's basically done. You're going to need some supports, and I recommend 3D printing it uh, this side down. Uh, but yeah, let's go over into Simplify 3D and uh, show you what I've done there. Hey guys, so we have imported our rim. Uh, as you can see, this is my final model, and um, it's not quite the direction that we want to print it in. So what we're going to do is we're going to flip it around. And to do that, we're just going to change the rotation, just like this. And that's going to look a little weird, so we're going to have to bring it back up. Okay, so in the editing process, extruder, it's all pretty standard. I haven't really touched anything. Uh, this is standard. The retraction distance is 7 millimeters, and the retraction speed is 2,500 millimeters. Uh, now, infill, you want that at 100%. Layers, now primary layer height, 2,000. Top solid layers, I like to do three. Same with bottom solid layers, and outer perimeters, I like to do three as well. Now use a skirt brim, I usually do two layers, and as for offset, 10 mils and three skirt outlines, infill again, 100%, support, generate support material, temperature, primary, ex primary extruder will be 190, bed will be 60, cooling will be 255, that's the maximum. Leave the G-code, leave the script, leave the speed, leave other and leave advanced. Other than that guys, you're basically ready to print. We're going to hit prepare to print. So as you can see guys, this is an extremely long print. This is a 12 and a half hour long print. That's just for one wheel. Now, you need this to be 100% because it needs to be as strong as possible. Uh, I know it's going to take a long time. The material cost is roughly $9 or something, supposedly. So you're probably going to use a whole roll of PLA, so uh, is this the cheapest option? No, not really, but it's definitely worth giving it a go. As for a 110 scale rim, it might be a lot less time to print, however I still recommend printing at 100% so you get that maximum strength. Uh, I'll leave a link again to the 110 scale rim, and uh, yeah, you guys can test it out for yourself, let me know how you go in the comments below. That's all for this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye! Okay guys, so don't tell anyone. The first person to comment Applesauce is going to get a shout out in my next video. So, you know, if you stay to the end.